Hey, I'm back to answer a few questions from last week's video. If you didn't see that, it was on booth design, and I have that link down below. And in that video, we talked a little bit about our mini block. I showed some of this, what you see up in the screen here. And then in that video, I showed a booth that we built this year. This is it here. And it was inspired by this project here, which we built oh, a year and a half, two years ago. And that job was all fox blocks all the way to the roof. That whole gable end window wall was all fox blocks. And that's the way I would build, is I would use fox blocks and fox buck because I want consistency throughout my build. I don't want to all of a sudden introduce a wood frame wall full of fiberglass when I've got a really nice wall or, or house built that's tight and energy efficient and then all of a sudden I've got one wood frame wall which is going to leak. Don't want that. I don't want any issues and I want to know that when I do a blower door test that thing is going to be perfect. So I do that gable end wall. Now it takes a little bit of extra thinking but it's not that much extra work. It's really um, pretty basic if you watch this video on how we did it. So that's why I put this together. I want to show you guys how we did it and how easy it really is and the concept of it. So now you watch this and in the end I'll explain a little bit of the engineering of it and what we've done a little bit further than that. Okay, we've poured concrete into this wall here and this is all a window wall and it's all got fox buck and uh, fox blocks and fox buck. And now we gotta continue this and this is what we gotta build. So check this out. How do you build that with fox blocks? Isn't that intense? So that's all fox blocks and fox bucks. So they're going to have concrete going in all those beams and stuff. And to build that up in midair, that's really tough to do. So this is what we did on this one. I came here to watch these guys build and these guys are pretty sharp. Look on the ground here. We just found a nice clean spot on the floor, chalked out lines, put the block down. And, and fit them into where we need to fit them. Now we know that it's perfect and it's a big puzzle piece. If you look here, we've got this middle column and it's actually squared off right here. And so we'll put this one piece into place first. Then we'll take these beams that we've created and these ones were done with the block running in this direction. We didn't cut them at a fancy angle, we just took Actually, this is 24 inch exactly, an 8 inch piece put onto a 16 inch piece and we made that beam and wherever these came together, we just made a, a straight cut. That's why we've got spray foam. We, we can just strap that together. Once the concrete's in there, it's going to look beautiful. So we're going to put this backbone up first, then these 24 inch beams in and then we'll put these support columns in and then these little fancy 8 inch angle pieces. So these four windows are exactly the same size and then they've got these bigger windows at the bottom. It'd be a very easy, easy job to do and then we fill it full of concrete. That's going to be fun. And take a look upstairs at the back wall that they have. They did a, an amazing job on that. Okay, so what do you think of that? Not that hard, right? Now it takes a little bit of extra labor just to put that all together and strap it together properly to hold concrete. And you have to strap that a little bit more than you'd think because you have to get your vibrator down there and consolidate it a bit more than you would on a normal wall. And so you need a little bit more strapping. So we did that, you saw that in that video and the pictures I showed at the end, you'll see the extra strapping that we put on. And then you'll be fine. You gotta have vent holes as well. When, you, when you're consolidating concrete, you wanna have places where the air can escape. And when we're doing a long slender part like that, I actually had some breathing holes that I put in so that as we vibrated, we would see concrete come out, then we know it's full. Then we go up, move a little bit higher with the vibrator, vibrate some more, we see concrete come out of that vent hole, we know it's full. So we push all that air out. We're actually pulling the air out with that vibrator as we consolidate and it comes out of those holes. Now, these type of walls, you could see in that we had one large lintel all the way across carried by two support walls that went down to the foundation. So I consider that like a garage door opening. So you could have like an 18 foot garage door opening and you design that lintel to support loads above as, it's, as it is a garage door. Now then you can put your fingers of concrete in between that, your whatever dividing members, you could put that with concrete as well, but those concrete 
are not, those pieces of concrete are not considered in the engineering of that wall. The engineering of that wall was basically just that long lintel and the two gables and that center column. That was all that was engineered. The rest is all just filler and decorative. Now it's strong, it's going to hold the windows, everything is good, but the major structural entity of that wall is that, that backbone and that cross member and the two gables. If all of that was tied together properly with rebar. Now you can go a little bit further than that. I did a house that was, it, it was larger on the main floor than it was the second floor. So we did basement and main floor were the same footprint, but the second floor was cut back about 20 feet. And so now normally you'd have that one wall that cuts all the way across and you would do that just in wood frame. I don't like doing that because now I've introduced fiberglass into, into the mix. So you've got a whole energy efficient house that's absolutely tight and it's going to pass that floor door test. All of a sudden you've introduced a two by six wall full of fiberglass. I don't like that. So I told the engineer I want that wall concrete. And the first thing he said was, well, you would have to put support posts all the way down to the basement and have a pad. I said, no, I don't want no posts. I want that open all the way through. I want to be able to do a renovation 50 years from now, rip all the walls out and that wall is going to stand up there by itself. So all we did was we made that wall into a grade beam and, and the deeper the grade beam, the easier it is to design. And in that one, it was very simple, a number five bar across the bottom and some number four bars going across. That'd be like a 15 amp bar on the bottom and 10 amp bars going across. It was very simple. And we just shored it up, poured concrete, 72 hours, we pulled the shoring out, everything was good. That supported the whole second floor. So you can do it. I also did it on a commercial job. We had a very large 14 unit complex and the demising walls had to span 64 feet, resting on top of holocore or spancrete precast flooring. Below that was a parkade. So they said I could not support the load of concrete. They'd have to do wood frame. I said, absolutely not. I want that to be concrete. So let's design a four foot grade beam all the way across and the point loads on the end will go down to the foundation. And they said, oh, that's easy. We can do that. And then we did 18 foot of concrete above that. Very easy. Then the load gets transferred properly and it's properly engineered. So you can do things like that. You just got to work with your engineer and have a good understanding of what that job, what needs to be done. And then you have to follow what the engineer says and do it properly. And you'll have a great job. It works, you can do it. ICFs work in most situations, not all of them, but most of them. So good luck and keep putting the questions down below and I'll see what I can do to answer them.